Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wall ADM. Today we're going to take a look at a trap that involves a shrine of statues and holy symbols and murals and frescoes that are dedicated to an evil god. Now this evil god specializes in illusion and murder and lies and illusions and it was set up by an evil clergy, clerics or paladins and it's just there for the psychological terror that this god likes to wreak havoc on. Now this is a trap that was created over in our Discord community by username Nobody and myself along with a few others added on a few additional ideas and this is what we came up with. So I hope you like this trap idea and it's something you can use in your game. This one's called Gas of the Evil God. So our character is going to enter a room kind of set up like this. Now this is going to be a religious area. There is going to be a holy symbol that is faded but still visible and it is painted in the center of this room. And matching symbols are going to be along the east and the west walls. Now there is a statue of a deity, all four looking the same. And these statues are going to be in each corner of the room. Now as our characters come into this area, they're going to see everything, so if you'd like to allow them to make a religion check at a DC 12, then I think that would be a good time to do so. Now characters that are able to make this religion check are going to be able to tell this deity or whatever that you put in your game. For me, I'm going to use Sirik, who is an evil trickster god of lies, but is also the god of deception, of murder, and of illusion, and I think it'll fit this theme just nicely. Now if the players roll exceptionally well on this religion check, let's say an 18 or higher, then I'd probably give them just a little bit more information if they're not already familiar with the god, such as in Sirik's case, I would let them know that Sirik is a petty, self-centered god that enjoyed manipulating individuals into ruining or ending their own lives. But again, this section of the trap is totally up to you and the deity that you choose and the setting that you choose to put it in. Now, after the characters take their first action, let's say they want to go look at a statue or look at the mural or fresco that's on the wall, it's at this time I would ask everybody to make a perception check. I'm going to set the DC at 12, so for players that roll a 12 or higher for their characters, they're going to be able to notice that the air has a tangy smell or taste. Now, if characters roll exceptionally well, let's go with a 25 on the perception, then I'm going to allow them to notice that there seems to be a little bit of wavy or glitchiness to this section of the wall to the north. Now, after the results of the perception check, I want everyone to make a constitution saving throw. And I'm going to give this a DC 15. So what's going on is this entire room is filled with a colorless gas that has a tangy smell or taste to it. Now, any of our characters that fail this constitution saving throw is going to be poisoned and they're going to begin hallucinating. For the demonstration purposes of this puzzle, we're going to remove our yellow character and our blue character, and we're going to replace those with two black tokens. And these are going to signify the characters that failed the saving throw. Now we're going to have a lot going on, so I would highly encourage the DM to ask for an initiative roll. That way we can keep track of everything and everyone can do what they need to do on their turn. Now with regards to our two characters that failed their saving throws, the poison is going to set in, they're going to begin hallucinating, and everything is going to be warped and distorted. And it's going to be to the point that these statues are going to take on like a demonic presence, and I'm going to use a little bit of a flavor from the deity that they're going to see these in the forms of bloody wraiths, and they're probably going to see clouds of poisonous smoke in the entire area. They would also see the holy symbols warping and distorting, but they're also going to see something that the characters that made the same throne do don't see. And they're going to see an open passageway that heads this way. And in fact, when they if they look around the room, they no longer see a passageway to the south. Now, on these characters' turn, they only get two options as being a poison character. The first option is they can attack. As they look around, they're going to see that these warped images of these demonic statues look like they're threatening. So this character here, let's say they decide to attack. So they are going to come over here and attack this statue. Or the player may choose to have their character run. So they're going to run in fear. So instead of attacking the statue, this character here is going to run north. And even as these two characters here are looking about, they will watch their friend run through this wall and disappear. And we'll come back to this character in just a little bit. 
but let's take a look at our character here that's attacking the statue. Now as far as the statue is concerned, it's nearly indestructible, even though it has some dings and slashes in it. It looks like maybe someone had attacked the statue before, but regardless, this character here is either going to use their magical spells or their weapons or something to attack the statue, and it's going to be an automatic hit. And when they hit this statue, they're not going to do any damage, but the statue is going to taunt them in their mind, and this character is going to take 2d4 of psychic damage. And now on this character's next turn, they're either going to need to decide they're either going to attack a statue again because it looks threatening or they're going to need to run in fear. And in that case, they will run the same direction that our first character did. Now let's say one of our characters that is not under the effects of our hallucinatory poisonous gas comes over and looks at these statues. I would allow them a DC 12 investigation check. And if they succeed on that, they're gonna notice two things. They're going to notice these slash marks, claw marks, whatever you, chips out of the statue, which would make sense that other folks have been here before and probably attacked the statue. So they're gonna be able to determine that. And they are also going to be able to determine that there are tiny portholes in these statues and there is gas emitting from them. Now, also for these characters at the end of each of their turn, or you can give them 30 seconds. That's going to be up to you as to how you run this in trap in your game, but they're going to need to make another constitution saving throw. And if they fail, then they're going to be under the same effects as the poison characters are. They either on their next turn are going to need to attack the demonic looking distorted warped statues of the trickster god Siric, or they're going to need to run in fear. And the only direction to run is north. So speaking of that, let's talk about this direction. Now this is actually an illusion that is here. Any type of detect magic that is cast in the areas is going to reveal illusionary magic. And there's going to be a strong dose of it here. So if our characters are to come over, they can put their hand through this wall with no problem at all. Now on the other side of this wall is an immediate drop. So our character that decided to run is going to fall 20 feet into a spiked pit trap. So they're going to take 2d6 of bludgeoning damage, and that is from the fall. And they're also going to take a d8 of piercing damage from the spikes. However, once they're down there, it's going to take them a d4 times 10 in seconds for the gas to wear off as the gas is not in this area. So let's say we roll two, it'll take them 20 seconds for the gas to wear off and then they'll be able to get their wits about them once again. Now the neat part about this trap is there's actually a door at the bottom of this 20 foot pit. So once our characters are able to regroup and they're off of the effects of the poison, they're going to be able to open this door and continue on. But it's going to take all of these characters going through this illusionary wall, whether or not they're poisoned or whether they go through it and drop or whether they use a rope again, that's going to be totally up to them. Maybe they just stick their head through there and look down and see what's up. But eventually, hopefully they get out of there. There's no way to stop the gas. And every time or every moment that you're in there, you risk the run of being poisoned. So we just need to get the characters down in this pit and then they can travel and continue on exploring the dungeon. So there's a lot going on with this trap and I highly encourage you to roll for initiative at some point just so you can keep track of all of the actions of the different player characters. Now why would a trap like this exist? Well there's a few things that I could think of but the primary one is actually that this god just loved this mayhem. He loves the psychological terror and things that could lead to death. He likes this type of torture and throwing in the lies and the illusion of the room just really satisfies this evil deity. Now, if you would like to take a look at the written form of this trap, I have posted it on the Wally DM Traps and Puzzles Reddit page. So I'll put a link there below so you can go and take a look at that. And if you would like the written version in PDF form, I will put a link to that as well. And if you're a patron supporting this channel at the $2 level or higher, you can also go to the Patreon page and download a map that you can use in your virtual tabletop games or print out for your home games. So that's all I have for you today. What did you think of the trap? Is this something that you could use in your game? And if so, what would you do differently? In particular, what deity or god would you make this a shrine to? Once again, a big shout out to the team over in the Discord. We always have all kinds of different traps and puzzle ideas that are floating around, and it's great to be able to present them on the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and on to the next.